We are joined down here in beautiful Dublin on a sunny uh, summer's day with Ashling, who is the girl against fluoride, and Deirdre, who is the recently elected councillor of Port in Welcome to Ashling, tell us all about the girl against fluoride. What's it all about? The Girl Against Fluoride is an awareness campaign to alert the Irish public about the risk of the fluoride chemicals that are added to our drinking water and what it's doing to our health. Um, so the aim is to get fluoride stopped in Ireland to have a mandatory policy. I have been fluoride in my teeth since the 1950s. They tell me it's great, but they're lying. Um, I think they are lying about the whole um, producing tooth decay. A lot of viewers have thrown that out years ago, and 98% of viewers are not coordinating with drinking water. Um, it's even banned in Holland in the 70s. And dental research is even saying now, the current dental research is saying that fluoride benefits are topical, i.e., you never drink two things and not, you don't need to actually ingest it into your whole body. It goes to every cell in your body. So, um, I mean, there's growing evidence to show that it is harmful for the body, and that's been ignored by the department.
depleting iodine levels and when you're so iodine deficient your thyroid then goes under functioning and when you have underactive thyroid if anyone will suffer that they'll know that depression is the, one of the main symptoms of depression and fatigue so that was how I was alerted to it when I avoided drinking fluoridated water and take I supplemented with magnesium and iodine I recovered so I thought okay well maybe there's something in this I started looking into it and I saw that there was scientific evidence out there showing how fluoride does um, interfere and lower um, thyroid function and a symptom of that is depression and I've had ladies contacting me now from highlighting this issue they contact the website and they have the same stories the exact same women that came from the north for perfect health came down to Dublin drink, drinking the third of water and developed reduced thyroid with depression and when they eliminated it they recovered so these are people's stories and obviously they're saying that's not proof that's anecdotal but surely that's enough for people to say well, you need to seriously invest okay, so, again I'm not scientifically qualified to talk about it. My understanding is that depression to a certain degree is caused by serotonin depletion. Are you saying that fluoride contributes to serotonin depletion in, even in a, uh, uh, a secondary way? Uh, well, there's been research that's been discovered by an environmental scientist, Declan Wall, um, and he's showing how fluoride does inhibit many different factors that would contribute to depression. We have all the links on the website to people can read view themselves. The main thing is that people are completely unaware of this so we're bringing it to their attention and people who have stopped drinking the water have felt an improvement in their mental health. Councillor Deirdre uh, Heaney, in, if you like, a year ago the Dublin City Council perhaps were in a better position to do something about it. You controlled the management of water to a certain degree. How is that going to be affected now by Irish uh, water, or Ishka Air, or whatever we're calling it now? Isn't it now a national issue? Like well, it, Dublin Bay? Well, it is, well, it is a national issue. Uh, but it, in my opinion, for, for me... But you could have it's, ordered it's, it, could you not, from Dublin City Council to say, stop Well, no, this. because it's, it, the, the City Council and the City Manager is carrying out... Um, uh, he, he is carrying out what he, is, he or she is instructed to do by the Minister of the Day, the Department of the Environment, are in control of... The, 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 the Department of the Environment and the Department of Health are in control of this issue. And it's a Department of Health and a Department of Environment issue. And I'm raising it um, because of what I said earlier. Um, questions were raised at a strategic policy committee at which I was unhappy with the responses received from the Department of Health. So it's as a result of that experience that I think questions need to be answered and the Irish public my, my concern is the Dublin public needs to be informed as to what the, I suppose, side effects, if there are any, uh, of taking fluoridated water day in, day out. Deirdre raised a very interesting question there, what are the side effects? Isn't it a case that what they, you bring in your expert, yes. they bring in their expert, but they cancel each other out. How, as a citizens, how can we get them to make a couple of informed conclusions? Well, I think the bottom line with the whole fluoridation policy is that it is mass medication public. They're putting it into the water for the only reason as to prevent tooth decay. They're not treating the water, they're not making the water safer. They are mass medicating you without your consent. And you're also giving the same dose to a baby as you are giving to a full grown adult. And interestingly, I recently got a prescription for research purposes from a dentist for sodium fluoride. You need to have a prescription from a doctor or a dentist to take sodium fluoride. And it's recommended not to use during pregnancy and not if you're under three years of age. And then you have information from health experts in the US, the American Dental Association, Central Disease Control, recommending parents not to use third inch tap water for making up baby bottle. So That's, this yeah, information is not being made available to the Irish public and they will admit that the only side effect it does cause is what they say is dental sclerosis. But they call that only a cosmetic issue. Now we have no, we have a number of people that have contacted us who have suffered from dental sclerosis, which are the white spots on the stains of the teeth. And that's actually structural damage to the teeth, the tooth enamel, which the only way to treat it is veneers. And it's actually incredibly costly for individuals to have to rectify this problem that's been forced upon them without their consent to supposedly prevent tooth decay when the benefits for fluoride are now being told as being topical. You can use it on a toothpaste, no problem. You spit it out, you're not drinking it, you're not cooking all your food in it. So, 
the whole mass medication issue is the one argument that cannot dispute, no matter what science, you know, for or against. Can I put something to you, Jindir? I mean, historically in this country, we've played with a one-size-fits-all solution, whether, you know, whether, whether it's uh, uh, in terms of women's reproductive health. We don't tend to allow the individuals uh, to make their own decisions about this. Some instances, I understand why we do the uh, centralised solution. In this instance, it seems people could be, people can affect their own solution. We were talking earlier about that. Yes. We shouldn't have to do that. Shouldn't we have the choice of saying, well, if you want to throw it your water, put it in, we're getting it the other way. Would you prefer to see that situation Well, 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 well sorry. What I would like is people to be made aware of, uh, of what's happening. You know, people can make their own choices. You know, yes, filter, filtering the water is a costly, is, is a costly thing. Uh, if individuals have to do it, but they can do it. I want them to know what is in their water. Uh, I want them to know why it's being put into the water. And I want them to have a choice as to whether they want to engage with their politicians to say, listen, we're not happy with this, or yes, we're happy with this. Um, people need to know, and then people, when they're informed, can make their own choices. And if it's a big issue, people will make demands on their politicians, and politicians are there, we're part of our communities, we're of our communities, and if something is wrong, we are elected to try and fix it and to try and make things better and a better quality of life for all of our neighbours and our families. And one of the things that struck me during the, the, the conversation, shall we say, at uh, the City Council meeting was I raised the issue of the concerns that had been expressed in other parts of Europe, of Europe um, about addressing um, or informing parents of young children uh, about the, I suppose, the, the, the recommendation not to use tap water, that is, fluoridated in the making up of baby formula. That's a concern to me and I'd like parents of very young children to be made aware that that is a concern and then they can choose to use, you know, have a filter fitted or raise the issue with their politicians or whatever. I just want this campaign to make people aware and if I can be of assistance to the campaign, that's what I want to do. I'm not saying they're right, I'm not saying they're wrong, but there certainly are questions to be answered they haven't been answered to my satisfaction. That's why I'm here, Mike. I'm going to be bashing the last word because you're the, uh, the girl with the fluoride. Yeah, against fluoride. Against with fluoride. the fluoride, yeah. Well, with the fluoride, but you don't want it. Yeah. Um, you hear Deirdre's, and, and what Deirdre is saying is very, uh, very sensible, very common sense uh, approach. What would you like to actually say to the elected representatives? Because clearly you believe in your side of the science every day. And it seems to me you've probably got two choices. One, you ask them to ban it, or two, you ask the people to get tax breaks or some form to be fitting filters or whatever. How do you feel that um, public representatives can address this issue to your satisfaction? Well, my, the ultimate, my ultimate aim is to have fluoride stopped, policy stopped, because, you know, it very much, it's fine to say, get a filter, but it's incredibly oppressive to try and avoid fluoridated water. You're having, if you're shower, it's, near, it's nearly impossible to filter it out. You're going to be absorbing it through your skin. You go out for a meal in a restaurant, all the foods that are processed, all the drinks, everything, is in our whole yeah. ecosystem, our whole, the whole food we'll supply is contaminated. Now, in regards to the elected representatives, I know that it's mandated by law, but recently we've had major um, push from individuals and a group called the Florida Free Towns Movement in Cork. And as a result of that, Cork County Council voted unanimously to end the policy and sent that up to the Department of Health. This is what's happening. But it's bringing it, to, it's bringing it out there to a level of awareness into the public debate. Into the public debate yeah. But it's kind of bringing it a level that we're not actually getting any change and that's where I'm feeling frustrated because I've been spending so much of my time which I'd rather be doing other things with um, trying to bring this out and trying to get the change that I want to see happening um, so I really just want the councils to be able to, to if it's fine to have one council if we have all the kind of connecting together and coming out against the Department of Health and really, so has Irish Water changed anything for you? Does it not give you a centralised uh, focus or a target to it? Well, Irish Water are, are fobbing us off like they all do, passing the book. They're saying it's up to the Department of Health. So at all stages, you're being, you know, nobody really is saying, well, actually, uh, we'll take responsibilities. You're being pushed away the whole time. So it really is a matter of bringing the information to the people as much as we can. And 
and eventually, in order to get policy yeah. change on the and, a, and eventually re reaching a critical mass of people being aware and then demanding they engage with their local representatives. And I feel that at that stage, when awareness is that high, people are thinking, okay, the side effect of potentially um, two decay as opposed to all these other issues that you're saying could be caused, may not be caused for everyone, but there is definitely side effects being caused by the fluoride. So I think that we need people to be aware. Let's give it one more just to, uh, so tighten just so that the, there we are. The girl against fluoride, and that is actually, thank you, uh, Councillor Deirdre Haney. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Thanks very much.